Long ago, on a great cliff overlooking a vast city of spires, rested a beautiful library, the chambers of which housed books and artifacts of magic and mystery, knowledge both ancient and forbidden. But its magical collection wasn't its only secret. It also doubled as the region's most notorious and elusive pleasure house. And within the hidden walls of that brothel, something unheard of happened. A girl was born. Every day, the courtesans dressed her up in bright colored silks and passed her between themselves like a doll. And though she had tearfully begged to keep her child, the girl's mother was rarely at her side. If she wasn't entertaining men, she was writing letter after letter to her beloved in the hopes he would come steal her away. That beloved was none other than the city's high priest, a crowned elite amidst the spires and one of the primary benefactors of the library, and by extension, the brothel. The mother's beauty had captivated him upon first sight and for many nights he called upon her and her alone. But one day, the priest's visits abruptly stopped, night stretched into weeks, and the courtesan discovered she was with child. She knew the risks of trying to raise a baby in the brothel, but went through with the pregnancy anyway, convinced it would save their doomed relationship. If only he sees how beautiful our daughter is, he'll take me to be his wife. I'm sure of it. On the fateful day, the priest finally visited again. The young girl had already grown enough to walk on her own. The young mother and the priest embraced, and after a few long moments, the priest finally took notice of the child. He took her hands in his and pitied the poor girl for being raised in a brothel. The mother, with new hope in her heart, announced the girl was no orphan at all, but their daughter, the living embodiment of their love. It was as if all the color in the room had been drained in a moment. The priest's gentle grip on the girl's hands turned suddenly into iron. All of his power and prestige as high priest would be ripped from him if the world ever learned the truth. The priest grabbed the girl by the arm and dragged her away, to do what should have been done the moment any accursed child was born in the brothel. Though her daughter kicked and cried and struggled, the girl's mother made no effort to stop the priest from carrying her off to her doom. As her tiny feet dangled over an endless black pit that smelled of foul decay, he said, No flesh and blood of mine will be born of a harlot. Rats who don't stop bleeding deserve to die amongst their own kind. Then, with no strength left to struggle, she fell. When the girl came to after what might have been hours or even days, she was shocked to discover she was alive, but her surroundings were enough to make her wish she wasn't. She would come to understand with terrible clarity why she had never seen another child in the brothel. Though her broken bones protested, she fled in terror willing her battered body to take her anywhere but the nightmare she had woken up in. Only the long, dank, musty tunnels of the sewers sprawled before her. What had been the point of surviving, the little girl wondered, if she was going to wander down here until she died anyway. Just as the girl began to cry, something small and furry scurried forth from the darkness. It was a rat, nibbling on a lump of bread and regarding her with big, beady eyes. She wondered how it managed to find food in a dark and scary place like this. She offered the creature a timid hand, and to her surprise, it climbed on. 
The rat pointed its twitchy nose in the direction of the tunnel ahead. There, an entire horde of rats sat huddled together, eyes glinting in the darkness. They carried the girl into a world that defied the limits of her imagination. It was a miniature metropolis of waste and wear, built of old wood and twisted pieces of scrap metal. It was here that these extraordinary rats nursed her back to health, as best as rats can. And it was here that this unlikely family invited her into their home, the first she had ever truly known. Sewer life was dirty and cold, and their only source of food was scraps of garbage they scavenged together from the brothel kitchen. But their life was a peaceful and happy one. Still, the girl was determined to find an exit. Not long after she adjusted to her new life, she took to exploring the sewers. While previous searches had only revealed dead ends and pitfalls, the girl eventually stumbled upon a secret passage not far from where she made her fateful fall. And what awaited her on the other side? might as well have been a portal to another world. She had stepped into an enormous library, bigger and more grand than even the ritzy brothel hall she was born in. Even more fascinating were the strange shapes and sculptures on pedestals toward the back of the library. An ancient mask donning fur and a pair of angular ears caught her eye, seeming to sparkle and beckon to her like something forbidden. As she began to thumb through a heavy volume bearing the same insignia, she felt herself being rewritten from the inside out. Dots and lines swirled together into a scrawl she could not understand. But the illustrations on the pages told the tale of a civilization blessed by gods. These human-wolf hybrids appeared to be stronger, faster, and even wiser than humans. They lived in great stone cities and wielded powerful magic from the sun itself. They were not bound by the laws of humans. They were powerful. They were in charge of their own destiny. They were free. When she returned home to the sewers that night, it was like a fire had been lit beneath her souls. Her world was expanding. She helped the rats raid the brothel's food stores with twice the enthusiasm. And when she wasn't scurrying about the sewers with them, they helped her sneak into the library in the dead of night. And slowly but steadily, the girl was amassing her very own little collection of magical tomes and artifacts. As her collection grew, so too did she. By now, she was confident she knew the sewers like the back of her hand. But that also meant she was confident there was no way to escape. It stood on a large cliff overlooking the city, for one thing. Every side except for its entrance was a sheer drop, while the sewage system was gated off with heavy metal bars at every junction that might have led toward escape. Even sneaking into the library and leaving that way was impossible. Armored guards kept posts around the building's perimeter day and night. As her understanding of magical properties and alchemy grew, she even tried mixing a potion to corrode the metal bars. But without access to any fresh, potent ingredients, her strongest potions may as well have been party tricks at best. There was only one thing left that might work. She was likely to fail, and if she succeeded, it might cost her everything she had. A ritual depicted in the ancient Lycan Book of Magic that allowed the summoner to harness the flames of the sun. But all was not to proceed as planned. Above ground, the courtesans began to notice their food stores were running unusually low. A few pieces of bread and cheese going missing here and there is likely to go unnoticed. But enough to feed a growing human girl for years is another story. What better way to teach thieving rats a lesson than a little poison? The 
first time the girl attempted the ancient ritual, she thought she did everything right. She formed the proper sigils, drew upon her own life force, and even managed to summon a few wisps of otherworldly flame. But the power was too much for her small, human body to bear. She ended the ritual before its completion, unable to withstand the pain. Her one last chance at escaping. And she had failed. Distraught and feeling hopeless, the girl trudged slowly back home, unsure what path remained for her. A shrill squeaking sound cut through the air, alerting her to the sight of a small, furry lump on the ground. She didn't want to believe what she saw, but at once, she knew. They were gone. They were her family, more resourceful more wise, and far kinder than any human she had ever known. They had given her a home when the world cast her out and shunned her from the light. She had found a light anyway, and these rats, her rats, now they would try to snuff that out too. Something within her heart snapped, but she didn't break. She smoldered. Flames burned through her blood as she restarted the ritual, without remorse or hesitation this time, without care for the risks involved. The ground beneath her feet came to life. She was fire, scorching heat, burning pain, a raw anguish that tore apart her heart and mind. She was nothing but an inferno of rage, Stand the ritual would be impossible. Yet, she remembered herself. But she also remembered pain. Pain. And terrible, aching loss.
Did you enjoy the story, Miss Jabs? That one's pretty intense! Thank you. 